Hello and welcome to another series with another wonderful lady. And this is our From Hustle to Holy, How to Transform Your Business by Igniting Your Divine Feminine. And today we have Megan McCann. Welcome, Megan. I'm so glad that you're joining us on this beautiful series. Thank you for Thank being you a part so of this. Thank you so much for having me, Beth. Yes. So, uh, viewers, I would like you to meet Megan. Megan is a best selling author, she's a speaker, she's a coach, she's founder of Soul, a Soul Success, which is a global personal development and leadership brand designed for female leaders ready to reach their next level. So she's doing good stuff, amazing stuff with women, which is why I've asked her to be a part of this series. And so before we dive into a little q and A, I'd love for people to get to know you a little bit more, and I'd love to get to know you a little bit more. So tell us a little bit about your background. Where did you grow up? What was your upbringing like? Yeah. So, well, first of all, thank you for having me. And I love this topic. So I'm thrilled to dive in. And I grew up in Santa Barbara. So um, I born and raised, born as in, you know, in a, uh, my dad was a sports writer. So of course, with four girls, we all became athletes. And I uh, grew up with the concept of like, I had to be the best. I had to like, you know, playing sports, division one athlete. I had to like make the team and be better than the person next to me. I thought that was the key to success. And it took me down kind of this dark path of competition and um, versus instead of collaboration. And in that, I realized that I wasn't the best at everything. And probably I was mediocre at a lot of things, but, <laughs> and, um, and it led me down this dark path of one week I uh, was working corporate in events and I uh, got, I was arrested for a DUI. I broke up with a boyfriend I didn't even really like, and I got fired from my job all in the same week. And so that moment of rock bottom re made me realize that I had forgotten who I always was. And I forgot mm -hmm. how to tap into my own inner guru, intuition, spirit, however you want to call it. And so that rock bottom really helped me investigate the world of personal development and how to become a better version of myself because the only way I had to go was up. <laughs> and so with that, I became a personal trainer and that let me, led me into uh, the health and wellness industry. I became certified in yoga and meditation. I uh, kept getting certifications, ended up getting my master's degree in counseling because I knew at that point that I probably wasn't the only one who had hit rock bottom. I probably wasn't the only one who was making decisions based on the shoulds versus the desires. And, um, and so from there, I started a health and wellness company. It did very well. And I thought, well, what's possible? Pivoted and started my own personal development and leadership brand for women which today is soul success. And it's just been incredible to be able to connect with women all over the world. And the theme behind it is really, you know, instead of there being, you know, one guru, we all have our own inner guru. We all have our own stories that have the ability to heal and possibly even save lives. And so that's really what the soul success brand is all about. It's all about collaboration. It's all about rising together uh, based on our five pillars of soul success, which is spirituality, health and wellness, money, relationships, and entrepreneurship, which service is also a part of that as well. So it's been really fun to be able to um, connect with women and have a vehicle to, to impact people who might have a story kind of like mine. The really the key thing is that, you know, we, we do have the, the knowingness within us, you know, a lot of times we, 
go outside of ourselves trying to search for those answers. And if we just tune inward and connect, we can get a lot of clarity and a lot of uh, direction and yes. uh, be surprised if we just be in stillness and listening, right? Yes. And I, it's beautiful what you're bringing for women in, in those pillars of success because it's really about setting those foundational uh, pillars. <laughs> uh, you know, the topic that we're speaking on is about the divine feminine and how beautiful it is when we step into this essence of our divine feminine. Now, whatever gender somebody relates with, we all have masculine and feminine energies. It's just mm -hmm. a matter of tapping into either one of them and having them really be in community and in alignment with each other. And that's where the magic is, right? I think I, I know that I've been heavily on my masculine energy a lot of times and I created a lot of resistance. I felt like I was controlling things and and it, it wasn't until I really tapped in and, and tuned into my divine feminine and had these two play together. And that's when, again, the magic happened and, and stuff just started unfolding in my business and in my life. And so I would like to ask you as as you've developed, uh, you know, from your upbringing into who you are now and serving your mission and to support women, at what point in your life did you find that you were operating very much from your masculine side mm -hmm. and, or maybe you were in a very masculine environment within your career, that you just found that things weren't working? Yeah. Oh, that's such a good question. Yeah. I would say, um, to answer your first question, how I found out I was operating too much from the masculine was when I burnt out. I burnt out. So going back to my story, when I built my first business in health and wellness, uh, we worked within a team and it was community, but it was definitely competitive. Like we would have, um, you know, top 10 within our community who, you know, were producing the most for that month. And so it reminded me so much of in high school and even in college when I played softball and it was like, okay, who is going to make the starting team today? Who is going to play first base? Who is going to make the top three in the lineup? And when I didn't get within the top three or 10, I always said, hmm, what's wrong with me? Like, why didn't anybody mm. acknowledge me? And so it turned into this hustling mindset because I could remember having conversations with some of my mentors saying, hey, you see what Tom is doing? He's killing it this month. This is, you know, he's talking to 10 people a day or he has this amazing boot camp on the beach with 500 people and this is how they're working out and this is their strategy. And so I thought I had to do what Tom was doing in order to be mm. successful. And what Tom was doing was a lot of hustle. It was a lot of numbers. It was a lot of, I got to do more. I got to like numbers, 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 more, 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 more every single day. And so I became obsessed with numbers. I became obsessed with needing more people in my life, needing to impact more people, um, needing to make more money. I became so obsessed with what was the next promotion. And I would do whatever it took to get there. That's a very masculine energy. The, the hustling right. is masculine. And it's, it's pretty interesting. I was having this conversation the other day with one of my good friends who studies hormones and especially when it comes to feminine and masculine energy. And she said, well, women, we just don't have the testosterone that men do. And so the masculine can benefit us, but not for long periods of time. We're not designed to be in the masculine for long periods of time. And so that's why a lot of women, especially entrepreneurial women, we burn out is because we do exactly what I just did. We want more. We, ha we have right. kids. We have relationships. We have business. We look at numbers. We look at money. We look at strategy. We look at tactic. And that is okay for that's actually beneficial for short periods of time but when you're doing that over and over and over again the burnout will come if it hasn't come yet and that's really what happened to me 
So that was me just really understanding, oh, I think I'm doing a lot of things that are out of alignment. They're not um, true to what feels good. It doesn't feel fun anymore to be an entrepreneur. And so I stopped working for about two years and I took time off. And within that, I was able to really tap into what lit me up. I asked myself the question of what, what? What, what's, what's fun anymore, you know, and what lights me up, what brings me joy. And that was the beginning of me tapping into my own feminine is the pause, the pause and the introspection. So I don't know if that answers your question, but that was the beginning of me learning about the feminine, learning about the divine Shakti and how we as women can harness that in a way that um, can actually help us and and funnel us when it comes to entrepreneurship and scaling and growth. Yeah, that absolutely does answer the question. You know, it was the uh, when, when did that? When was that a turning point for you? And in what ways did you then bring that in? And so, what are some of the practices that you're currently doing that you continue to nurture your feminine? Because you, you built this business, which is very structure based, which is masculine. So. You know, there's some beautiful uh, parts of our masculine and feminine. It's just we really want to tap into the balancing and the aligning of the two, right? You built this beautiful business. So there's, there's definitely masculine that's working for you. And how do you get to continue to nurture your divine feminine and, you know, make sure that she stays ignited while you're building your business? Totally. That's such a good question because I feel like a lot of people come to me and they don't know this, but their intention is masculine driven. They come to me because they want to make six figures in their business. They want to scale. They want to learn how to, um, what's the right strategy to automate so that, you know, they're not having to work as much. And so they come to me for the tactical, but what ends up happening is the, uh, we end up focusing on the, the feminine, what, asking those questions of discernment, what are you doing that brings you joy? Um, helping them tapping into their inner guru. And so I think when it comes to mentorship, I used to come from the lens of, I want my mentor to teach me exactly what they did and tell me all the answers and tell me the perfect strategy. But when we're out of alignment, when we forget how to honor our intuition and pay attention to the little nudges. And I use this concept called the emotional thermometer, which I actually, um, all of you have access to my five days of meditation and manifestation. And I um, just recorded day four, which is turning on your emotional thermometer. In other words, does this feel good? does this bring me joy? Is what I'm doing right now to build my business in alignment with my values? Or am I doing it because this is what I should be doing it? Is, is this what I'm doing? Because, you know, one of my gurus said that I should be doing this, but that works for them. I don't know if it works for me. And so I think to be able to ask these questions and go deep we all have the answers within. We don't need a guru or a mentor to tell us what lights us up. We don't need somebody else externally to tell us what we should be doing. We know within, and that is a huge piece, I think, to honoring our divine feminine is honoring our inner knowing and tapping into alignment. What brings us joy? What... Um, what feels like I'm in flow? What's, what's the best next step that's, that feels good for me? Um, and so those simple questions, I know it seems so simple, but you could have the best strategy in the world, but it's not going to work if you don't, you, if you're not honoring your own discernment and honoring your own inner guru. I've worked with thousands of women. How come some women have built these highly successful, profitable six, maybe even seven figure businesses, and maybe others don't. And I think the, one of the biggest pieces is those that are highly successful know what feels good, know what's sustainable, know what's long-term versus 
I got to hustle and I got to do what everybody else is doing. And then they crash and burn out and then they want to quit. So I think that to right. me is the biggest piece to that. Yeah, you make a really good point because, you know, as a lot of business women are searching for mentorship, coaching guidance, uh, it, it is sometimes they, they gravitate towards the things that are more maybe um, hustly and because they're looking for a lot of these, you know, structures within their, their business and remembering to stay very in tune with, um, you know, their, their essence. Uh, while they're while they're doing that, while they're while they're choosing that uh, mentor, that guy, that coach um, is is really important. So, you know, you talk you talk about feelings and the importance of of feelings. That's very feminine. You know, how am I feeling in this right now? You know, and uh, and being okay with uh, taking immediate action, but being but honoring your feeling. Right? Would you say that that's kind of like really like the marrying of it both masculine and feminine is take action, but really honoring your feeling too of what that what that feels like. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. And, yeah, and I think on that point, uh, I was just talking to one of my friends during my um, manifestation class, and she was saying that uh, she has a hard time saying no, saying no, and creating boundaries. Mm -hmm. And I think as um, professionals, it's, we, sometimes when we get in flow and we just want to say yes to everything and yes, I'll do that. That sounds like fun. And yes, I'll, um, you know, schedule this play date with the kids and yes, I'll go on a date and yes, I'll, um, you know, join this summit. But I think for us to really check in and say, Hey, can I get back to you about it tomorrow? Or can I get back to you about it next week? I just need to make sure that this feels good. That is an important tool that I've learned very recently because crash and burnout can be a product of us saying yes to everything because we want to be nice. Um, we want to make other people happy. We want to be of service. But if it's not in alignment, how much service and value can we bring to other people when we're not taking care of ourselves. So that, that pausing mm -hmm. and saying, can I get back to you about that? I, I think is a really important tool that especially women can build the muscle of using on more of a daily, daily basis as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And there's such honoring in that honoring of ourselves and, and being true. And if, if we're really, being a yes to everything, we're not only being a disservice to ourselves, but the other person too, because we're not fully showing up, um, right, in, in our best self. So, you know, since igniting and aligning with your divine feminine, what have you noticed has transformed for yourself and your business? Oh, man. Um, I would say that flow flow is the first word that comes to mind for me. And you can remember my first business. I like, I have to be totally honest. I really was not, that business was pure masculine. I don't even think I knew, even though I was like teaching yoga and diving into spirituality 11 years ago, I didn't even know the word discernment. Um, I didn't understand feminine energy. It was pure hustle. And so with soul success, now it feels so much more, more alignment where I don't have to work as hard in order to impact more women and um, the tactical piece as well. I think, uh, I think it, before it was like I had to outperform my own self-sabotage in order mm. to become successful. And I see a lot of um, people do this is there's that inner voice that's in their head that's saying you need more degrees, you need more education, um, there's somebody else that's better than you. And so I have people come to me all the time saying, Megan, I, I want to scale my business or I want to launch this program, but I think I should go get more education. What do you think? And my response is always, mm, 
spend, don't, and don't get me wrong. There's a time and a place where more education can serve you. But if it comes from ego, if it comes from sabotage, if it comes from, I don't know if I'm good enough for this imposter syndrome, it's not always the right answer. So to answer your question, I feel that with soul success, I've been able to scale this business with so much more ease and grace and alignment. And this is sustainable. This is sustainable. Whereas my first business model was not sustainable because I was so out of alignment. And so tapping it, I really owe it to the really honoring my divine feminine and what lights me up and to pause when necessary to check in um, has been able to create space for so much more flow and grace and honoring myself. So um, that, I think that to me is what's the biggest thing that's opened up for me over the past five years. Wonderful. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. That's so good. All of that. It's so good. And I love what you're doing uh, with your business to inspire and empower women. And so you have a free gift. You, you gently mentioned it uh, earlier on. What is this free gift that you have for, for our audience? Yes. So um, I'm so excited for this. I've been doing challenges for probably a decade, and this is my absolute favorite one. It's five days of guided meditation and manifestation exercises to be able to shed that, I hope we can curse, shed the shit <laughs> and open up so that we can finally manifest what we desire in life. So it's a lot of deep work and in tapping into what are the things that we're doing in our business and our life that are out of alignment and how do we build the muscle of uh, turning on our emotional thermometer and doing things that, that feed us and fuel us and that bring us joy versus things that just feel icky. So it's deep work, but it's highly highly transformative. And um, that's my gift to everybody who is watching. And I think when it comes to feminine energy and spirituality, and, you know, lot, we always hear about laws of attraction and manifestation. I think what's often missing is the empowered strategy piece. Like, if I think it into existence, it will magically appear. And I've learned that it doesn't work that way, at least not for me. <laughs> So this, um, this sure. freebie has specific tools and action steps that you can start implementing right away so that um, you're blending the masculine with the divine feminine. Wonderful gift. Thank you for that. That's and, and diving in deep. That's always fun, right? That's where the great work is, is diving in deep. Any final words for our audience before we close today? Oh man, final words. I would just say, enjoy the journey. I know there's a lot of uncertainty and chaos and fear and limitations that um, seem to be very noisy right now. And with that comes so much beauty and grace and lessons and investigation and curiosity if you choose that. So um, just in, enjoy and en, enjoy the journey as hard as it may seem and trust that everything that's happening, I know this sounds so cliche, but it's so true is if you can switch the lens as to like, why is this all happening to me instead of, uh, and, and replace that with, this is all happening for me. This is part of my contract and journey. And I have so much wisdom to gain because I'm in the thick of it. And um, so that, that small conversation has been really helpful for me. Um, is yesterday, we got quarantined and, you know, we had to cancel Halloween. And it might seem very surface level for a lot of you, but it, I could have, I started with the lens of like, oh my gosh, this is awful. My poor kids are going to have to miss out on Halloween and friends. And then I said, well, this could actually teach them resilience. and how to become adaptable. And I, as adults, want my kids to become adaptable. I don't want them to think that everything's going to be thrown to them on a silver platter. And so I think as adults, if we can take on that perspective of 
how do I find the silver lining of this? What lessons do I have to learn? How do I actually enjoy this process and get creative in it will, um, will help us just become a better version of ourselves and, um, and, and access our light in the whole process. So. <laughs> Thank you, Megan. Thank you for being who you are. Thank you for uh, being a stand for women in their uh, greatness and taking their lives to the next level. Thank you for being a part of this, this series uh, event uh, from Hustle to Holy, How to Ignite Your Divine Feminine. And uh, until next time, bye for now.